I'd like to introduce you to tonight's guest speaker, Dr. Katie Wellen. Katie will discuss how nutrition impacts genetic regulation in the context of disease development. It's really an honor to be here. I'm really excited to have the chance to share with you some of our work. We all know from our personal experience that the gas gauge is a pretty important component of your car, right? So you know that if the gas gauge is reading full, you can go about your activities and do whatever it is you need to do. You know that if it reads empty or close to empty, you need to go seek out a gas station, fuel up, um, and then you can continue with your activities. But you also know that if your gas gauge does not work, you could wind up like this poor fellow here on the side of the road, pushing your car along in your fancy clothes, which is not what you want to happen. Like it is for your car, it's also true for the cells in your body. Your cells need to be able to assess what their nutritional resources are and then make decisions about what they're doing based on that information. Cell division. So cell division is something that takes place in your body um, every day. Uh, just as a couple of examples, you know, for example, that you know, dead skin cells will slough off and then new, new skin cells will grow up and, and renew. Um, you know that you can you know, donate blood and your circulatory system will ultimately renew. Um, so all of this depends on cell division. But of course, this also happens in tumors, right? So the growth of a tumor depends on the cancer cells growing and dividing to make two daughter cells. And so um, you can really, I think, pretty clearly visualize it here. As one cell becomes two, you need to be able to duplicate the DNA. You need to be able to copy, make different proteins that'll be present in both of the cells. And then you also need to make membranes so that each cell has its own membrane. So, Nutrient metabolism underlies all of this. This is a strain of mouse called the agouti viable yellow mouse. Uh, agouti is a gene that controls the mammalian coat color. And in this particular strain of mouse, there is an element of DNA. And when this element of DNA is epigenetically regulated by methylation, which you can think of it as sort of like a coat around the DNA and it, it acts to shut down that gene, basically. Um, you wind up with a mouse with a brown coat color, and by the way, it's also thin and healthy. And then when this um, piece of DNA is not methylated, you wind up with this mouse with a yellow coat color, and it's also obese and prone to cancer and diabetes. And so what's really remarkable, though, is that these two mice are genetically identical, but the difference is that this mouse's mother was supplemented with nutrients that are important for making that metabolite called SAM that's needed for DNA methylation, and this mouse's mother was not, okay? So it looks like this if we come back to our diagram. The mouse on the right, the brown mouse, was, its mother was given folic acid, vitamin B12, and choline that are needed for making SAM, and that led to more DNA methylation and the healthy mouse, whereas the mouse on the left did not receive, its mother did not receive these supplements. Okay, but that's, that's a weird strain of mice, right? Does, it, does that have anything to do with what's happening in people? And there is actually some evidence that the answer to that is yes, um, and some of the best evidence for this comes from a historical event, actually. So um, if you may have heard of this. This is the Dutch Hunger Winter. Um, this was an event that took place during the winter of 1944 to 1945, near the end of World War II. And basically, the Nazis cut off food supplies to parts of the Netherlands, so the people didn't have access to much food. And it was an extremely cold, harsh winter, making matters worse. And basically, adults were rationed down to about 400 to 800 kilocalories a day by, the fe by February of 1945. So it was true you know, starvation conditions that these individuals were subjected to. But the Dutch kept really outstanding medical records during this time period, and this has allowed there to be uh, extensive epidemiological follow-up of this particular cohort. And what has emerged from this remarkably is that the children who were exposed to the famine in utero, meaning they were conceived during this Dutch hunger winter period or just prior to it, um, they had greater rates of developing obesity, diabetes, or cardiovascular disease as adults, and some of these effects actually carried over to their children as well. Um, and we do think that this has something to do with DNA methylation, 
Um, this is analysis that's been done much later on those children who um, you know, were conceived during that Dutch hunger winter period. Um, and this is analysis comparing an exposed sibling um, who was conceived during the Dutch hunger winter versus an unexposed sibling who was conceived during a, a time of normal nutrient availability. And the exposed sibling here um, has, the, has lower rates of DNA methylation overall. To sort of summarize what I've shown you tonight, um, I've shown you that nutrient metabolism in cancer cells can impact epigenetic regulation of gene expression. And so now in the lab, we're really interested in understanding what roles this plays in our normal metabolic health. What does this play in normal physiology in our responses to foods that we eat on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I've also shown you that the metabolic reprogramming that takes place in cancer cells can impact the same axis. Um, these oncogenic signaling pathways can, can drive these epigenetic changes. And so we really want to try to further understand now what roles this may play in tumor growth and if we can take advantage of this to find therapeutic vulnerabilities as we've begun to, to dig into. We also know that obesity is a risk factor for several types of cancer. And um, in the future, we're really interested in trying to understand how diet impacts this metabolism epigenetic links in cancer cells, if the incidence of certain types of cancer may be able to be reduced through improved nutrition, could have a big public health impact if so, um, and, and how diet will impact therapeutic responses.